So this video is going to be a little different than the other videos because it occurs to me that I really haven't talked about the strategy I want to use for this restoration. And to explain that, I need to tell you a little more about myself and explain kind of why. So the first thing you need to know is I'm not a professional restorer. I'm a true garage mechanic. This really is my garage. And this is perhaps my fourth restoration of an old vehicle. A lot of people, when they decide they want to restore a vehicle, they, they sort of start out in their heads that this is going to be the best thing ever and nothing but the best will do. And I'm going to do a frame off restoration, take it completely apart, restore every part back to new or better than new. And that's really awesome if you have a lot of discipline and you have a lot of money and a lot of time or if you're a professional you have a great shop and a great staff and you know it's going to happen on the first day because what happens a lot is in first you're really really enthusiastic about things and that makes taking the vehicle apart really great it happens and so you get the whole thing apart and you discover all that it needs it's you know, this is rusty and that's worn out and the other thing doesn't work and the rubber parts need to be replaced and so on. And eventually what happens is you run out of steam or you run out of money or something happens in your life and you can't finish it. And you end up with a partly finished restoration project with a lot of boxes. And I've always been really anxious to avoid that happening to me. So my strategy has always been it really incremental. I'll do a project and then get the vehicle back to running condition and then do another project to get it back to running condition so that I can always at least start it up and drive it around and then it's never totally apart and always in boxes and, and months away from being useful. Um, and that's always worked for me and that's what I want to do here and then I should tell you that I sort of have in mind that this is going to be a bunch of little projects that are going to end in three stages or three sort of decision points. And the first is to get all the things on this vehicle that don't work back to working condition so that you can drive it around, that it's safe to drive and then it doesn't have any immediate needs. It's basically reliable. You can start it up and drive it. But I'm going to stop short of fixing the rust and repainting or restoring the interior. And the reason for that is I actually think there might be some people interested in a vehicle like that where it's old, it's got a little class, it's got a little um, history to it, nostalgia if you like, and you can still use it for a camping trip or a hunting trip or for off-roading because the outside's not precious. It doesn't have fresh new paint and you don't have to be worried about denting it or getting it stuck in a stream or something like that. It'll be, and it might be fun for just knocking around town. So the plan is to get the vehicle to that stage you know, sometime in the next few months and then see if somebody's interested in buying it. And I should say it'd also be a lot more affordable at this stage because I won't have put a lot of money in it. So it's one of my goals is to keep costs low, at least at this first go. Um, if that doesn't work, if I can't get the price I'm hoping for or if there's nobody interested then I'm going to go to stage two which is to do all the body work. I'll remove all the rust, replace uh, body panels where needed with fresh metal. I'll do that all properly with a welder and then we will get the vehicle repainted and that'll make it a lot nicer to look at. It'll also make it a lot more costly because that just the paint job alone will be, add several thousand dollars to the price of the vehicle. And then um, depending on how that all goes, there is a third stage that might be um, uh, basically add-on. So I might add a winch, I might do a lift kit. I'll think about an engine swap because uh, these, are, these are kind of nice sturdy engines but they don't put out a lot of power and they don't have very good fuel economy. And I'll think about an engine swap um, and I'll think about um, things that might make this a good boondocking vehicle or, or, uh, or a true off-roader mocking hubs. Um, but if you think about the cost of all those things, that's a lot. It'll add a lot to the cost of the vehicle and make it a lot more expensive to buy.
Uh, if you go look online, vehicles like that are commonly $30,000 or more. And I keep thinking if it was my vehicle, I wouldn't want to use it for serious off-roading like that because too much money's been put in the bodywork and the paint and, you know, it could end up on its lid or stuck in a stream and I really feel awful about, you know, what I ruined if it happened to me. So if it was me, I'd rather that it was perfect on the inside than if it's a little rusty and faded on the outside, that's, that's okay. So anyway, that's... Uh, that's what I wanted to put in this little video here is because I don't think I've ever really shared that and maybe you're curious about why I keep doing this little thing and then putting it back in the car and why I haven't torn it all the way down to its frame and taken the engine out and so on. And that's really it. So um, there you go.